Also, it's done with three silences. Yeah. And an I mean, this is definitely Ten a PKB game. Yeah. Well, I would say second item, treads, and then. And Jules is not the best right here because I actually like uses the Jules. She's setting up for other spells. Yeah, I, I don't. You know, Jules is so situational for me on a lot of these intelligent heroes. Storm, Blob, Puff. Um, I don't think that this is the best game for that. I think just getting that earlier BKB and being able to take fights is going to be very clutch. Surprise! Oh, Surprise! Blood Seeker. Blood Seeker is unusual ban out unless you already show your one position. Remaining. I think he counters AM and Lycan the most of the one positions. So they might be setting up for like an AM. AM actually seems pretty good versus IG. Burning played it. Has played it a couple times this tournament. And he's done fairly well on the hero. This is kind of like a free ban for a team with last pick. They say, you know, what's the one hero I, I just really don't want to play against? Also, they're definitely picking a melee hero to pair up with Magnus here. Yep. So, Bloodseeker is kind of an anti-melee hero in that, in that regard. Also, they can't give Invictus a fourth silence. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they could. They could. They could. All in on silence. <laughs> they <laughs> could. Yeah, they might Invictus be too all in on silence at that point. <laughs> It's a, it's a, you know, that though it is a delicate balance, you need to have a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So we've seen Queen of Pain be, again, in a lot of situations where it feels like you need something neutral. We've seen tons of teams go for Queen of Pain. It hasn't really seemed to have very much success Ten at the main stage. Remaining. This pick's also often a little tough, too. You have to pick the year one before you see the uh, opponent's one. So you can remaining. also pick something more neutral. I think, like, Weaver's pretty neutral. is like, pretty decent in most matchups. Uh, anything anti-melee is how I feel. LGD's turn no, it's to pick. Faceless void. Faceless void. Anti-melee. Anti yeah, I like it. We've even seen Faceless Void and Magnus in power uh, coming out yesterday. So, could it, yeah, it could have been an option for LGD as well. No, I really, I really, really like that pick. They've got ten seconds remaining. A ton of great heroes up against melee. The you know this melee core that I do believe Five is coming from Burning Her. For, Sorry, right. There it is, the Troll Warlord plus Magnus that was mentioned right at the start gets closed out, and Invictus Gaming has some intimidating team fight with the Disruptor, Earthshaker, and Faceless Void. It's time for game number one to begin. Each of these teams is guaranteed top six, but would love to win here today to get into top four. Take it away, casters. Top four is definitely what both of these teams are chasing. LGD versus Invictus Gaming. I'm Toby here with a wonderful Cinderin, and what a series, LGD versus IG, still, uh, still kicking hard. We look at the drafts, it's very expected, I don't want to <laughs> say, of what we're wanting from LGD as well as IG. Yeah, kind of. Um, I think PPD made a good point that these two teams have been showing extremely high skill and also know each other very well, so when you're in that sort of comfort matchup, you could almost say, then... Uh, there's two options. Either you try to really take them out of their comfort zone and completely surprise, or you stick to your guns because you kind of have an expectation of what the other team will do. And they've kind of just been, you know, counterpicking and counterpicking and counterpicking yep. while getting their own heroes. Um, there's a lot of heroes, to, obviously, to highlight in this game. Uh, Eleven on the Magnus, we've got Bobuka Earth Spirit. Uh, the one that I think wasn't given that much attention was the OP Death Prompt, which I think is, he's maybe the best player in the world on this hero, or at least easily top three, has been having outstanding games um, I believe it was at the key of major that IG were just first phasing this hero as the only team that got respect banned against them. Uh, so certainly a lot of comp first picks from zone. for both Patience teams. So is that confidence to do it again? First phasing up that Death Prophet. We will get ourselves underway already. LGD looking to establish map control. And they are going to run that uh, 11 Magnus up towards the off lane. Do you like the Tuscar pick up as well? Something else that uh, LGD has moved into. We see a lot of team fight coming out from him. Is the Tuscar going to offer maybe that presence to the mid lane to try and control OP's Death Prophet? Um, it's it's a good hero against the Death Prophet in lane because uh, Death Prophet, Prophet is very movement based when it comes to the lane. You wanna when you siphon, you wanna be able to run heroes down or siphon to disengage or slow your opponent and run away from them. But the shards can counteract both types mm. of play. Uh, in addition, it gives them catch. I think it's very nice. When uh, when you look at how Victoria plays, he generally plays this Kunkka and the Tusk here, as, as they were talking Great. about. And I think this is just LGD's replacement pick when they can't get their Kunkka. This is a, a, a good way to go. It's it's similar to Kunkka in the sense that Kunkka has both the aggressive and the defensive potential with X mark and Ghost Shift. And Tusk is similar. You have the aggressive and defensive Snowball, and um, the Shards can also be used aggressively and defensively. So I think it's just a good, like, hybrid aggressive defensive uh, support pick that LGD seemed to really favor for Victoria. 
Well, we'll see just how effective it will be in this game. For the moment, Magnus has been forced off that top bounty room. Burning will take it. And you haven't gotten onto the fact there was an Observer Ward also placed down around the corner. Everything else, as far as tempo goes from the game, what are both teams really looking for here? Are you happy just to let the lanes play out? Maybe just look for that rotation ganking towards the mid and let the safe and the, and the off lane just be very passive? Or should there be more rotations to other lanes? Or is mid just the focus? Um, it's a bit hard to say. The Queen of Pain is not the easiest target to gank for the Earth Spirit. Similarly, actually, we're going to have action right away. OP. Yeah, he's actually letting the Spirit Cypher go pretty early on. Victoria comes in with a shard, pushing OP down. Somnus getting a lot of damage into OP. He's already going to just munch on the Tango. Happy tree. Obika, not really having an influence until that point, but now it's the supports who have to create space for their mids. Yeah, this is... Every mid game at TI. <laughs> it seems like <laughs> the only thing we're missing yeah. is the Nixus Assassin Mana Burner. Yep, and it that's is literally the classic mid. That is true. No, no Mana Burn this time around. Did get first phase banned together with the Night Stalker, so Nyx still banned. Now, that was, I think, the 100th ban on Nyx and the 99th on Night Stalker. When you see so many bans on that type of heroes, it really tells something about the the style of play that the teams favor. I was waiting for you to say it's going to tell about the patch log, which comes out shortly after TI. <laughs> More than likely going to have an influence on that. If the hero gets banned so much, has a tendency to get there. Nice bash from Burning. He's practiced that for years. One of the... Is he the oldest competitor this year, I think? He's 29. The age of the player, I'm not certain. As far as the years of playing Dota, he's got to be up there. He's definitely up there, that's for sure. One of the... One of the very old school players from all the way back in Dota 1. Went under both the nicknames of Burning and I believe AAA for a while. That's a long time ago when he played on E Home, 2000, I think, 9 or 10. I'll give you a plus one point for your memory, Syndrome. Thank you. I got a little bit of a movement coming out from Yao. Looks like he's just coming up for the two minute rune. And uh, Boba gets himself an action rune, so a double damage may not be enough. OP only has the Crypt Swarm to lost the Spirit Siphon, so they don't have that instant. First Spirit up at level 2, so it's an opportunity. Roll forward, they keep the silence on Somnus, but it's not long enough. And now maybe the Shards turn around. No, it cannot lock in Bobaka. So Somnus will just burn the south. The gank potentially could have worked just because of that level 2 on the ES. It's still, it's still successful for IG. You want to keep the pressure up on this Queen of Pain and not just let her farm and play aggressively on the Death Prophet. They want to respond, force the Queen of Pain to buy regen so you delay her other item progression, and especially when you have that double damage run. Oh, nice shards! Yeah, it's uh, gonna hold OP in position. That's not enough. Already used that uh, Shadow Strike onto the Earth Spirit, so they couldn't commit for the Death Prophet with it. And it looks like Robocast is gonna walk away for a little bit. Probably use his Blast scan his clarity here, and get ready to surprise. Right. That's exactly what he's gonna do, so... I'm not sure if we're gonna see him rotate and try to do anything elsewhere. For now, the off lanes for both teams are getting quite a decent amount of farm, as is the norm in this patch, so both of them sitting on level 3, not getting completely shut down whatsoever. The only, thing, only problem you probably have is for Magnus, bottom lane, troubles, Yao, here comes just Snowball forward, XSS underneath the tower, the shards, he doesn't block him in, but the shackles still holding him in position, the earth, he cannot get back, not far enough into the safety of the tier 1 tower, so LGD, Claim the first one on the off lane Earthshaker. Meanwhile, in mid, there goes your silence once more onto the Queen of Pain. And she has enough life to get back to the tier one without forcing the blink. Had to buy an extra pack of tangos, and he's munching through all of them, I think, here. This is aggression, so the bottle is getting quite a bit delayed. Seeing me maybe going for this thing that has become a lot more normal in recent times, going the double null talisman before the blink, or sorry, the bottle, so that he can. Contest in CS, having a little bit of extra mana and health, a damage output. Uh, it looks like the bottle will be coming out for OP though, so he's opting for that more. Yes. I mean, I'm not completely sure what the ratios are right now of what mid players do, but I feel like we're seeing more double null than null into bottle. Uh, but with DP, of course, if you have this head start, it's very nice. There's a lot of runes that are very good on DP. Arcane is one of the best ones, especially yeah. into the later portion of the game. Not so good right now. No. But at least having the bottle and controlling the runes with Bobica lets them bring Bobica back up to full health and mana, who's now going to be just hiding in a tree as Victoria walks past him, says hello. So they can at least shake hands for the moment. Bobica, it's like he still wants a rolling ball to fall and someone's going to be able to catch him. Shadow Strike is down, he has Scream at level 2, and with OP there, there is no way someone's could commit into the Earth, Earth, shake, Earth Spirit. And he's going to use this Arcane rune to get that siphon off of that nuke, and it's very low mana cost, obviously. Um, 
I think it's pretty important for OP to have this rune right now. When I look at this, this mid lane is going way more the Queen of Pain's way than I thought it would. He is so far up on denies. 16 denies of the Queen to the core of Death Prophet has actually given Somnus more or less a full level advantage in this mid lane with both of the supports helping out. And that's good news for LGD. Getting that fast level 6 on Queen before Death Prophet gets her levels up allows you to go for that key kill in the mid lane that very often swings the game a lot. Yep, and if Death Prophet starts falling behind, if this Invictus Gaming playing Reactionary, then they can't look to use their combinations either. And we can always think about like that big combination that IG have. If you get a good Chronosphere with all the damage that will come out from Exorcism, then you've also got your Echo Slam, your Control from Disruptor as well. They're all finding levels on the supports. Just these teams simmering and not wanting to really open up just yet. LGD is getting a small advantage across the map, 1,000 in gold, 600 in experience. It's a small amount, it just means their lanes are going slightly better than IG's. And that's, that's very good for LGD when you also have this Magnus, because what has a tendency of defeating Magnus lineups a lot of the time? Actually, wait a second, Victoria, yeah, rolling, the roll though. missed though, so they're not going to commit. Um, when it comes to Magnus lineups, the the way we often see them lose is either that the the Magnus team gets pressured really hard early on and gets pushed before Magnus' empower starts really kicking in and giving his core's farm, or that you have the late game carries that can deal with this RP and, and melee cores. And looking across the board, I think IG would have liked to have a bit more success early on in terms of just raw laning power. LGD have drafted very well around that. All three of their lanes are doing doing very very well here. Yep. They're just counting their time until the right moment. Are um, they able to harass that bottom tier one tower quite heavily? This is with the catapult wave and is forcing an extra TP. This disruptor coming down, rolling ball up. Able to connect on the troll ball up. Yao and Victoria is here, but Victoria can't get in straight away. That Earth Spirit kick doesn't work for the shot! Massively on the money! Access test! At least he can start to create a little bit of space, but he will not survive! LGD, huge kills. And the pressure on the tower will actually make this easier for Arme to finish the job and bring down that first tier one. This is one of the biggest strengths of Troll Warlord. In this early laning stage, he is extremely tanky. 13 armor, uh, the, one, the first point in Berserker's Rage gives 6 armor. He wants to go this Ring of Aquila build. So, IG, I think kind of naive even trying for that kill. They TP down the Disruptor, who's level 4. These heroes combining their spells don't have the damage until Shaker's level 6. And a bit of a, an assessment mistake there, giving LGD some very nice kills. Victoria in the right place at the right time. There was the, again, kind of that hybrid play with Tusk that was both aggressive and defensive at the same time. He saved the, saved the troll and gave them two kills with those ice shards. They're gonna go again, Victoria. Here comes the shards forward, locking in the earth, shaking Q. What can you really do here? Puts up a wall, the fissure, stunning and keeping the troll wall on at least away from the earth shaker and OP. Reinforcements have arrived. The death prophet wants a fight. They're gonna get it. The glimpse, dragging troll back into the spirit cipher, plus the excess of damage. It'll be more than enough to bring down Arme. And with this, now it's gonna be Invictus gaming to push the other way on bottom lane and attack that T1 tower. This was a lot better. That was a great rotation, bringing down these heroes, using the Exes aggressively like this. I think maybe a necessity for OP as well to get out of mid for a little bit, because maybe it's dominating him so hard. Uh, this kind of play it puts his hero to good use while he's getting out leveled in mid, at least it secures that bottom tower. And now Shaker's gonna TP into mid to try and protect this against the aggression of Somnus and Victoria. So, IG get on the board, getting the first tower of the game and some a little bit of a kill to boot. Uh, they do, but LGD are looking for a rebuttal. Dyer's so they send Armei up to the top lane to attack into the tier 1 tower. As you said, that mid lane was taking considerable amounts of damage. Victor's gaming do hold it back for the moment. But IG's team fight's gonna get better. You have Chronosphere up for burning. You have the phase boots, at least for the movement speed of OP. When it comes to those team fights, very critical for him to be in the right place. Obrika, maybe not the greatest Dyer's thing for him. Like, he's probably the weakest attack. point of IG at the moment only now going to hit level 4, soaking up the experience in the mid. This is something we see from Earth Spirits in quite a few games. It's a bit uncharacteristic for Bobuka because he has this like X factor on the hero, just a tendency to find these early kills, but in this game I think he's a bit lineup limited in what he can do. The, there is no good lane to gank for him. Killing Troll with this hero is almost impossible. Killing Queen of Pain is very difficult when your mid laner is a Death Prophet. And in the top lane, maybe they could have found a pick on this Magnus if they combined their spells very nicely, but it's not the easiest either. So he's going to be a little bit slow here. This does happen sometimes to Earth Spirit. The main thing is finding level 6. Then even if your early game is slow, you can get that one great team fight with Magnetize, and then all of a sudden your hero looks like it never had a bad early game. 
still waiting for that team fight from LGD. You have Magnus, he uh, currently went for a 4-2-1 build, so just focused on heavy farming for the moment, does have the arcane boots, needs that last critical item for the team fight, which is the blink dagger. And I actually, it's a very non-invasive from both sides. They're not contesting any parts of the jungle for either side. It's pretty much everyone's got this almost ceasefire agreement. You're allowed to farm, you're allowed to farm, and then we'll take a T1. Okay, then you take our T1 tower. Straight trade-off, we understand the rhythm of the game. But someone's going to change the beat. An LGD under this smoke gank, maybe they can do exactly that. Well, this slow-paced game is certainly favoring LGD right now. They're getting through that difficult, or the hardest stage of the game, arguably, for Magnus. He's just been left to free farm. He's been giving troll and power multiple times, so the farm is just flowing in for LGD. And Eleven will not skill his RP for quite a while, probably just get four in power and yes. his talent. Yeah. Perfect That's observer wants him to see him. Victoria starts with the shine, just wants to block him off. Able to do so, Queen of Pain moving forward. The Fissure buys a little bit of time. Radiant's There's a lot of mana in XSS, but LGD backing Radiant's off the fight. They really didn't want that. I think Meanwhile, that mid fight. lane is OP attacking with the Exorcism. Beating into the tower, they've got the Chronosphere for cover, they've got a catapult behind them, not to mention all five heroes from Invictus Gaming have gravitated towards that mid lane. Cute, cute little ghost fishies. Getting the tower. I still... It's so weird to me. This this cosmetic is weird. Have you got something against fish? No, not at all. That's just, she calls them their sisters. It's weird. Have you got something against female fish? <laughs> just, I mean... Uh, I don't want to go there with this, but, but let's not make it a uh, gender. Oh, bottom lane. Bottom yeah, lane. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's comes forward. He's already moved down far enough. He won't be able to avoid the kick from Bobica. Goes for a quick hex. The wall is up, so he knows he can't go anywhere apart from just Ether Shocking. Shackles was available, but doesn't use him. So IG rotate. They do find a kill. But while all this is happening, you've still got Somnus farming up the top lane. Everyone else has gone either into the jungle, into Ancients. Victoria's considering going on OP in the mid, but uh, our mate's got other thoughts looking for the double damage rune in bottom, but you're not even going for that. In fact, it's going to be into the bottle of OP. We've actually seen surprisingly little stacking from LGD, maybe even none. Um, this troll with Empower can farm quad stacks of Ancients very easily on level 9, just having this blind from the Whirling Axis. It's a 4 second, 60% miss chance, and you cleave down these Ancients very fast, but they haven't actually and stacking for him that much. Maybe I missed a stack on the right ancient camp, but it doesn't look Dyer's like it, actually. He already killed the big dragon the there, and then he was like, whatever, I'll go for the other camp for some reason. Um, they could have probably amplified Ame a lot more than they have by just stacking a bit more. When you have this slow of a game, it's not that difficult for the supports to just make that little sidestep and, and stack a camp or two, but they've been protecting their cores more than anything with both the Shaman and the Tusk, and this aggressive move looks like it's successful in mid. The Serpent Lords will take this power. Goes the way of Yao. Just wisely read by Yao, fallen. understanding that none of the cores from IG Radiant's were there, especially the cores which can deal attack. with mass serpent mods, which really are not that many. You don't have the range for it, you'll have to tank through the damage, burning, as well as OP are really the only ones right now who can deal with mass serpent wards. So they take the tower, and then LGD look towards the top lane. They're ready for a fight. Bail of Discord is up from the Queen of Pain, so ampl amplification is there. The RP is skilled. You don't have mass serpent wards, but there should be enough power. If LGD can find us that one pick. I, I think LGD still just want to wait for the blink, you know? Why not? Keep farming, keep building up this troll and this mag. As long as IG aren't bringing on the aggression, I, I'm with LGD for this game, with the pace it's having right now. Just allow the farm to continue. Yep. Their, their gold lead is continuing to stretch bit by bit. It's just shy of 3,000 at the moment, just shy of 4k in the experience. So... Yeah, LGD are happy to accept accept the status quo. There's still good farm coming in for IG though. It's it's not all this Magnus and power, and now it's starting to gonna start to ramp up. Now that he has the level four in power, and, uh, and the natural like movement speed of the heroes is increasing. The troll is going for that Yasha, so he's gonna be able to traverse the map quicker and accelerate his farm. But so far, Burning has been doing a good job keeping up with this troll more or less. He's about 700 gold behind right now, uh, which I think is. Definitely admirable under the circumstances of the game. 11 bodies point dagger. So yep. It's just that group up. You've got smoke over on Yao. So if LGD want to look for a fight, they can do so. But is it still wise to do it? Like, you've got that blink dagger, you've got the timing right, but at the same time in Victor's Gaming, they get their moment. They actually get the blink dagger for the Urshik coming on the Courier. And they neither smoked, team knows. They smoke out of range of the Observer Ward. 
Uh, maybe they saw him get it delivered, actually. Eleven, I think, might have got the Blink Dagger under that Dire Ward. Uh, they could have seen it, but the Radiant surely doesn't know that XXS has his. He has no, smoked it, up. It didn't, they didn't see it. They definitely didn't see it. XXS now coming forward, looking for that Blink Echo. Who's he going to find? Right now, the Echo Slam. It doesn't get the sound of the Troll ball on. You can still get Q's ulti out, however, but the damage. The troll standing his ground. Snowball can pick him up and drag him forward. They're going to find the kill already. Flipping the Earth, shaking like an omelet into Bobacar as well. LGD really not being punished when they get caught out. You can at least put down the Chronosphere. Combining with the X's, but Yao holding OP in position. They need space for the RP! LGD! They already thought they had themselves a good fight. They end up claiming four hero kills. I'm really surprised they tried to go for that. Like, it looked like a good Chrono into DP ulti, and they do get that one kill on the Tusk, but they were kind of just going in two on five. Disruptor was already forced out of the fight after getting his Static Storm down. They didn't get that kill, and the Troll once again just a bit too tanky. That Echo Slam has to connect first. And instead of going for a mini blink there, the Shaker tried to mellow e melee Echo Slam, but he was a little bit out of range. Then he has to blink to get the Enchant Totem, and that creates the distance for Trolls. We're going to see it here. The Echo actually, I think it missed completely. It did. Now he gets in, gets the Fissure, and that little bit of damage is what they were lacking. Troll turns around, starts hitting with that high life steal, and Victoria brings him in with the Snowball. Again, that both defensive and aggressive play at the same time with the Snowball this time around is going to put LGD in a great position. Now they have the Aegis and a 5k advantage. That really is the sweet spot for LGD. Exactly what they wanted to do. Their first team fight, the reveals of the Blink Daggers. Victor's Gaming not getting what they want. They have to wait until you get Echo Slam back off cooldown before you have these big, long cooldown abilities. Another minute or so until you get both Void, Ulti, and Exorcism back. That's a good point about the Dire lineup. It's very cooldown reliant. Uh, the Radiant obviously have some key cooldowns as well in the RP and the Sonic wave, but outside of those, when you look across the lineups, it seems like the, the key cooldowns are more integral to the success of the Dire teams. Uh, just plays around the map than the Radiant. So whenever these fights happen, LGD are going to feel confident to both farm aggressively and push towers. And with the Aegis, it's going to be no problem whatsoever for Ami to just walk down this right side of the map. Look at his net worth right now compared to everyone else in the game. 9.5k, he's a full uh, two and a half grand in front of the Faceless Void. You said it was good only team fight it was and power. before. <laughs> good teamfight and empower, and there you go. So Sanjin Yasha, Mask of Madness, Phase Boots, minute 17. This is really, really high farm. This is above his standard for troll, for sure. LGD are now moving that troll to the top lane. Burning, being forced out of his own jungle. He wants to be able to farm this, but thanks to the Observer Ward vision from LGD. They can see Invictus Gaming's movements around the mid tier too. They'll understand when IG also go into their jungle. But the easier way just to make that jungle more fearful, Dyer's remove all of the outer tower towers gone. on the top lane. Troll took this tower down in a matter of seconds with uh, Empower and... He didn't even ulti. <laughs> just Empower and the Fervor stacking up. This, this is pretty bad news for IG. They're actually getting crushed after their own aggressive move. That backfired yep. so hard that they lost complete control of the map. Here comes the fight again. LGD Dyer's trying to keep that momentum and make it even bigger. It's the smoke move maneuver. As uh, well, it can break. They don't find a target just yet, but top lane, it's going to be the Earthshaker. RPM up the solo flip. Oh, people arrive, but then again, you put the mass up and was down. And Yao even caught the Earth Spirit. Bobaka wanted to come and help. The Glimpse, he's just trying to get some space here. Q begins his TP, but it won't happen. Invictus Gaming are dropping like flies. And LGD, they can do no wrong. This is an absolute beatdown right now. Uh, this tier 2 tower is gone as well, and all of these IG teamfight abilities that you look at, and you're like, this is a great teamfight lineup. It's just not happening. The, the lanes went well for LGD. The Queen of Pain and the Troll had good starts. They got that one good fight, and their lineup just is snowballing completely. Now the TP oh, in they're from coming Bobica. In. Are they really going to be able to do this? The Troll Warlord, man fighting up against the Earth Spirit. OP needs a big fight, burning, looking for the Chronosphere. They'll actually isolate Arme. But remember, he's got the Aegis Immortal. Shake is going to lose his life just to burn this. And burning, well, there goes your Chronosphere. OP, he needs this kill with the Sonic Wave. The damage amplification just way too much. Invictus Gaming, four heroes down. You know you're gonna make it five. Q can run, but they call GG in sub 20 minutes. LGD, this is a curb stomping by them.
Magic. This game is just over. Literally. Oh, yeah. I mean, what did uh, IG knew they were going to lose a lane to Rax there. And if you lose a lane to Rax 20 minutes in against the lineup with Magnus Troll, it's not 